Good afternoon, folks. You just stumbled on to the Freedom to Draw and Solve Mysteries. I'm your host, John Krupa. Today's case is a case from Pennsylvania. This is the unexplained death, the cold case of a 10-year-old girl from Muncie, Pennsylvania. It's in Lycoming County. This girl's name was Jolene Witt. We're going to tell you about her case and draw her at the same time. Guys, strap yourself in. You just stumbled onto the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. And we're about to take you inside this cold case from 1997. Guys, this is the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. Alright, so this article, the first article we have here is from 2002 and it gives you details on what happened in this case. The victim was Jolene Witt, and the date was September 29th, 1997. The facts of the case, the Pennsylvania State Police, Montoursville, are investigating the homicide of a 10-year-old Jolene Witt on July 27th, 1997. Muncie Borough Police Department conducted a missing persons investigation. Authorities believe Witt was removed or left her mother's residence located at 1 Grant Street in Muncie between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. on September 6, 1997. First of all, that is wrong. She was not with, she was not at her mother's residence. I know that for a fact, uh, she was at her uncle's uh, extended family's residence, so it was not her house. They were staying over for the weekend, so that's wrong. I'm positive of that. On September 6, 97, her body was discovered by hikers in a wooded area off Sulphur Spring Road in Armstrong Township, and that's in Lycoming County. Their description was a white female, 10 years of age, five foot tall, 120 pounds, long brown hair with brown eyes, small scar on her upper lip. I guess that's that, or maybe that's a mole um, somewhere here. At time of her disappearance she was wearing pajamas or bed clothes what can you do if you have information on this person that did this or any other serious crime or wanted person call Pennsylvania Crime Stoppers at toll free 1-800-4-PA-TIPS and that's right there in the upper right hand corner guys 1-800-4-PA-TIPS now we're gonna move on so that article was uh, had some wrong information on there but it was from 2002 so this one is from 2015 this article Wrong person may have been identified as killer of a 10-year-old girl, investigator says. The Williams, this happened in Williamsport, this article. The investigation into the 97 disappearance and murder of a 10-year-old Jolene Fay Witt that attracted national attention has never been closed because... There was no arrest. Lycoming County Detective K. 
Kenneth L. Maines, who specializes in cold cases, said Monday, based on his extensive review of the case, there is possibly authorities in 2001 might have identified the wrong person as the killer. And that is how I got turned on to this case, was Detective Ken Maines. I watch his channel. Always interesting. And informative. As I draw the twists and turns of her hair, I am reminded that there are a lot of twists and turns in this case. The then District Attorney Thomas A. Marino had identified Jolene's uncle, Bruce Longnecker, as the person who strangled or smothered, smothered a girl in his Muncie home. Jolene's uncle. Marino based this identification off evidence he said was obtained from two grand juries, results of DNA tests, and hypnosis of the two girls. Longnecker committed suicide in upstate New York on November 4th, 1997. Not too long after when the disappearance happened. A day before investigators were to interview him. Maines will not provide details for his belief someone other than Longnecker was responsible for the death, but said he has provided District Attorney Eric R. Lenart Linhart Lin Linart I don't know that sounds on Linart with a more than 30 page report of his findings it would be accurate to say Maines has reached any conclusions since the investigation with state police is ongoing Linart said state police declined comment other to say the case remains open because no arrests was made And it's open to this day. In 2023, it's still open. I think there's a $5,000 reward. Again, I'm not a numbers guy. It's some significant amount of money though. As investigators, we will go where the evidence takes us, Lenard said. If the evidence allows us to charge an individual or individuals with her murder, we will. Jolene disappeared on July 27, 1997. Her decomposed body was found 41 days later. Later, by two hikers on a mountain south of South Williamsport in an area Longnecker was known to target shoot at. Marino, now a congressman, said Maines is entitled to his opinion, but unless he has discovered something revealing, he feels confident investigators zeroed in on the right person. Jolene was visiting her mother, Linda Longnecker, who was living with her brother, the girl's father, Lindsay L. Witt Sr. and her mother was never married. Lindsay Witt, who died a year ago, that a year ago from this article was 2014. Said after Marino's news conference in 2001, he was not satisfied with the outcome, adding he thought others had been involved in the death.
Grand jury testimony indicated the house was locked before Jolene. Six other children and three adults went to sleep and Longnecker went to bed in his underwear. At his news conference in 2001, Marino revealed the following. When Longnecker, Longnecker was rousted from his bed to be told Jolene was missing, he was wearing jeans. There was no sign of forced entry to the house. Investigators with which included the FBI and Muncie police learned on numerous times Longnecker, Longnecker had made crude remarks about Jolene's anatomy and had touched her inappropriately. That is something new that I did not hear about right there. DNA tests link sperm on the pillow cover on Jolene's bed and material on her comforter to Longnecker. But that was his house. Again, you should think about this before doing any judgments. It was That was his house. Jolene and her sister were staying over for the weekend. He may have done it on that pillow and... You know, he might, he might have masturbated on that pillow and used that to, before that even happened. Before they even came into the house, they could have had sex and used the pillow to wipe himself off. They had sex with his wife before they even came into the house. So that's not that strong of evidence. Long Necker did move his family to upstate New York on October 25th, 1997, not too long after it happened. He knew investigators were coming to question him when he committed, when he took his own life, Marino said. This article now is from 2018. Cold case homicide victim, 10-year-old Jolene Faye Witt from Armstrong Township. The Pennsylvania State Tro Police Troop F, Montoursville, Criminal Investigation Assessment Unit continue their investigation on the homicide of Jolene Fay Witt. On July 1997, between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m., 10-year-old Jolene Fay Witt was removed or left her residence at 1 Grant Street, Muncie, Lycoming County, PA. See, that's wrong. It was her... She was abducted or left from her uncle's house. I'm positive of that. Jolene Faye Witt was last seen by her mother sleeping in the second floor bedroom of the residence at approximately 2 a.m. There were no signs of a struggle or forced entry into the residence. Jolene was reported missing on July 27, 1997. On September 6, 1997, the body of Jolene Witt was discovered in a wooded area along State Route 0554 Armstrong Township, Lycoming County, by two hikers. A forensic pathologist determined the cause of death to be a violent homicide.
This is a mystery to this day of what happened to this young girl. Anyone having inf any information is requested to contact the Pennsylvania State Police, Montoursville, 570-368-5700, or anonymously contact the Pennsylvania C Crime Stoppers at toll-free 1-800-4PA-TIPS or online, and there is the website right there. All callers to Pennsylvania Crime Stoppers will remain anonymous and could be eligible for the cash reward, which is $5,000. Now this final article is from 2020. Jolene Faye Witt was born to Lindsay and Linda Witt on February 18th. 1997. 1987. Jolene's parents divorced in 94 and her father had custody of her and her other older siblings. Lindsay, 12, who was a boy, and Cassie, 11, another girl. Jolene lived with her father and siblings in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Their mother, Linda Lawnnecker, lived in nearby Muncie and had visitation rights with the children but she was staying with her brother who is Jolene's uncle so it was actually she disappeared from her uncle's residence I mean it sounds petty but uh, little details like that change the case On Saturday, July 26, 1997, Jolene, 10, visited her mother for the weekend. At the time, Longnecker lived with her brother, Bruce Longnecker, and his family, including his wife, Christine, and their five children. So there was a lot of people in and out of that house. A lot of people. A lot of people in and out of that house. Jolene went to bed around midnight on July 27th. Her cousin slept next to her in the same bed. Christine Longnecker checked on the girls around 3 a.m. and then went to sleep an hour later. Longnecker's screams awoke everyone in the house. Jolene was not in her bed. The front and back doors to the home were all open and Jolene was nowhere to be found. And they did say that the parents were playing Scrabble and drinking, uh, but they all said that they double-checked the doors before they went to bed and made sure they were locked.
quick search for the girl on Sunday and Monday produced no evidence of her whereabouts or who took her. Jolene's father, Lindsay Witt, participated in the search. Both he and Longnecker were not considered suspects in Jolene's disappearance. fitting that we have rain coming in the background noise here because there's quite a significant amount of rain happening in real life out here too. The investigative team consisted of 23 full-time investigators from several nearby towns, the FBI and state police. Following Tuesday, a helicopter equipped with infrared detectives flew over adjacent fields and a search dog went through a nearby deserted barn. Late Tuesday, divers searched a section of the Susquehanna River. So it seemed like they were doing their job. Searching for this girl. So what happened to this girl? Someone brutally assaulted her. Okay. Police had zero suspects in the case and any leads or tips led nowhere. Around 3.30 p.m. on September 6, 1997, hikers found a badly decomposed body in a densely wooded area along Route 554 on Bald Eagle Mountain about 3 to 5 miles south of Williamsport. Williamsport Water Authority owned the land, but hikers and mountain bikers could use it if registered with the agency. There is not much evidence in this case.
Four days later, the body was identified as Jolene Witt. The autopsy report stated cause of death was homicide by violence. Police said they had a few possible suspects but did not release further details. More recent reports set, state that Jolene was either strangled or smothered. So that pretty much does it for this case here. There is still no suspects. Pretty much the guy that was the main suspect took his own life and they kind of debunked it that he was the actual killer so they still have no idea who killed this young girl Jolene Witt guys remember to do something nice for somebody today doesn't cost you anything and with that we're gonna say peace out true believers